three, two, one. Wah, delete that. Um, it also comes with. Oops, UPS. Hi, creative friends. This is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club. In today's video, I'm going to show you 10 tools that I love and use regularly almost every day to run my art business. Now, we put out a lot of videos that show the equipment and hardware or art supplies that we use, but those are related directly to the creation and production of our products. But these are behind the scenes software that I use regularly that help me save a ton of time, help me market my business better, and just overall help my business run smoothly and more professionally. I'll keep it snippy and get to the list. Last disclaimer is this video is not sponsored by any of these companies at the time this is filmed. I will specifically tell you when the tools that I'm using and have been using for a long time and just to help you because I know if your business is new you don't want to spend money on all of these tools so I will give a free alternative as much as I can as well. Let's get to it. The first tool is an accounting or bookkeeping software. Not enough creative business owners use a tool to help them and I also think they've waited too long before they start using it. I really urge you to get in the habit of using it. So when people think of counting, they're thinking like QuickBooks and they gotta like figure out all this counting jargons. It's really not as hard as you think, especially since the beginning, you don't have a huge amount of business expenses. Sure, you can keep everything on the spreadsheet. You can download a statement from your bank and mix up all your personal and business expenses, but it's so much easier if you can use a software that links up to your bank statements and you can categorize it. And at the end of the month, you can run a statement that shows how much you made and how much you spent. And you don't have to be an expert in accounting or finance to do that. So for the first two years of my business, I used the software called Wave Apps. Um, everything will be listed in the show notes. As of right now, I am using Zero. They're similar to QuickBooks, so they're just slightly different based on their ideal customer. But Wave Apps is more than enough for you if you have a new business and they're free. The only time they charge is if you want to send invoice to a client and they pay by credit card, they will charge you, you know, a transaction fee. But sending the invoice doesn't cost you anything. It'll actually make you look professional. If you're doing a commission for someone, you can always encourage them to pay you by Venmo or PayPal. So yeah, Wave Apps is the first one and I use zero. Number two is an email marketing tool. If you listen to any of those business marketing podcasts, you may know even in the year 2020, email marketing is still a very high value marketing channel, more valuable than social media. And for the first two years of my business, I use MailChimp, which has a free version. So if you have somewhat of a small list. You can use MailChimp to send out emails to people who sign up for communication from you and you don't have to worry about your email landing in their spam box or something. So MailChimp is a free tool that allows you to send emails to your email list. So anybody who's interested in hearing from you by email and you can schedule it. It has easy to use design templates. But after a couple of years, I've outgrown MailChimp because I needed more advanced capabilities. So I am currently using Klaviyo. But again, your business is new. MailChimp is more than enough. And it's definitely better than you mass emailing a bunch of people from your Gmail because that's bound to land in their spam inbox. The third one is, of course, an e-commerce platform. I still have an Etsy site today. I started with only being on Etsy. But during the second year, I started putting a lot more focus on building my own website. So my e-commerce site is hosted by Shopify. Number four is my project management slash content calendar management tool and that's Airtable. Airtable does a lot more than just those two things but those are kind of the main purpose for me right now. What I like about Airtable is its flexibility to switch between calendar view and list view so if you have a team member or you just want to manage your projects better you can organize tasks by lists by they have like different views of lists and you can also view it by calendar so that's the calendar view is great for managing your Instagram Instagram posts, 
posts or if you're sending emails for your Instagram posts or if you are releasing a new collection and you want to work backwards on when you want certain tasks done to prepare for the launch, that's great for that too. And that's one of the ways I use it. Airtable does have a free version with limited features and I think that's more than enough to use for small business. But if you want other options, there's Asana and Trello, which are also project management tools. Personally, I like the flexibility of Airtable. The fifth one is a photo editing app. My favorite is Snapseed. I've been using that for the last four years and I still use it more than any other app. It does cost $2.99 from the app store. I don't know if they've increased their price since I bought it, but I don't think it should be much more than that. A free version is Snapseed is like a Photoshop on your phone. Snapseed is so easy to use and it has so many different capabilities. Like if you have a white background and there's a thermometer and you want to erase it out of the background, like you can do that. It's just super flexible. You can spot treat certain areas in the photo to make it brighter or darker or more saturated. The free alternative would be Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Not the desktop tool which costs money. The Adobe Lightroom Mobile is a free app that you can use on your phone and it also has similar adjustments that you can make to your photo. Number six is a social media planning tool. I've used Planoly and later in the past but I like Preview the best. You just get most bang for your buck. In my case I use the free version and it comes with unlimited posts so you can plan as many posts ahead as possible whereas I think later the free version is only limited to 30 posts and what I liked about preview is once you push the content out to Instagram and you come back to the page it will ask you to confirm the post. Preview app also comes with basic analytics so that's a bonus. Number seven is a photo editing app which I use to clean up and digitize my watercolor art. I use Photoshop CC which requires a monthly fee. I just pay for the entire suite. That can be cost prohibitive if you're just starting out. So another version even though it's not free it's Infinity Photo that they build these tools that are in direct competition to Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator but I think they're just as robust. If you are not dead set on using Photoshop definitely recommend investing Infinity Photo. They only charge a one-time fee instead of the monthly fee because they want to get more users switched over from Adobe products. Another free alternative is GIMP but I said when it comes to photo editing tools you kind of get what you pay for. Free tools are going to be pretty limited in features. Number eight is a business email hosting service. Now you can just use Gmail for free if you want to especially if you're starting out. If your business name is Dreamy Art you can just do dreamyart at gmail.com but I personally like to seem more professional when I'm reaching out for collaboration opportunities or reaching out to wholesalers. If you purchase a domain from those um, website domain hosts like one on one, GoDaddy, sometimes they will offer one email for free. Other times you can buy a domain for like a couple dollars. Zoho is another one that offers, I think their lowest tier is a dollar for you to get your own email and your own domain. I use G Suite by Google just because they have file sharing, storage, and because I'm just used to the interface with Gmail. Paid email is definitely not a must have but something that you can work towards especially if it costs as little as one dollar I think it's worth thinking about. Number nine is an email extension that I use with my Google email or my business email. It's called Streak email domains. I love this extension. I am on the free version. They have paid version as well that you know, help you manage like sales pipeline projects and all of that team collaboration. But I just use the free version because it tells you when your recipient reads your email. I mean, that was mind blowing to me when I first found out about it because when I was doing all the wholesale outreach to potential buyers, I could see if they read my email and kind of like figure out when to follow up or not. If someone read my email multiple times, I gauge that as more of a warm interest and try to send them another nudge email. So that was pretty awesome. They supposedly track location as well, but a lot of times that doesn't work just because the other party might turn off no location tracking on their device. So getting that red date or just knowing that the other person read your email is everything. And last one, number 10, is a to-do list manager. You could be old school and just use a notebook and write down your task for the day, or you might be using a 
planner. I use a combination of a physical planner and an app on my phone. My favorite is Any Do, Any Dot Do. It's a app on my iPhone,、uh, but I also use a physical planner as well. What I like about that, the Any Do app, is if you're the type of person who like writing down lists of to do and crossing them out, then Any Do satisfies that same dopamine hit when you get to cross off something. So when you're done with the task, you just kind of swipe across it on the app, and to me, it feels just like crossing out something on paper. This is not a complicated tool. It's not even meant for business per se. But for me, when I'm starting out the week or the day, I just want to know what's the most important one to do. Two things I need to tackle today. And once I tackle those two things, I will feel productive for the day. Sometimes I have a lot of things floating in my head that I need to do. I just write them down as lists and kind of assign them for myself to do later. And I can set reminders for me to do them on certain days. And if it doesn't get done today, it automatically gets pushed to the next day, which is more efficient than physically writing it down. And this is my favorite as a simple and efficient. There are other options too. You can just do a quick Google on best to do list app 2020 or whatever year we're in. So I'm not gonna list all of them, but just sharing what I use. That's it for the ten tools. It might be overwhelming to you if you are just setting up your business. And like, oh my God, do I need all of these things? No, you don't. You trust your intuition to know what you should sign up for, and maybe this will just be the first of many nudges that you'll get from different sources before you decide to invest in something, whether it's paid or free. And all the tools are listed in the video description. Leave in the comments below if there are any tools that you personally love and can't live without as a creative or a business owner. I love to hear them. I love. Tools that just make our lives easier. Thanks for watching and hit the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.